you're standing, bow with me in a word of prayer. Gracious Master, we come before you once again. And before we ask you anything, we thank you for everything. Thank you for the grace that grandmother taught us was amazing. That looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. God, we pray for all these who are here, who are under the sound of my voice. Pray for those that desire to be here but just couldn't make it. And then, God, we pray for those that didn't desire but ought to be here. We pray that you quicken their steps, that they may come to know you in a very real way. Now, God, we pray every time we stand behind this sacred desk, if you please, please let me preach. Not for fame, not for reputation, not for pats on the back by men, but to the end that somebody might be saved. Rescue me from me, God, and use me in your service. I'll be so quick to give your name to praise. Thank you, Lord, that last night was not our last night. That you gave us another chance. To come and proclaim that Jesus still saves yes, to the utmost. And we are grateful for that. Thank you, Jesus. This prayer we pray in the only name worth talking about. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God said amen. Come on, say amen again. Come on, say amen one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I've got to settle down here. You got me shook up. When I came in, I told Pastor Jones, y'all crazy. <laughs> but, but, but I like that kind of crazy. I need to know, I need to poll the audience. Is there anybody here who knows my Jesus? Yeah. All right. Bump somebody close to you and say, ain't he all right? Yeah, he is. He's an all right God. He's an yes, all right God. Now, I, I, join me in saluting your pastor. Amen. Pastor Lewis Jones with a great amen. Amen. I, I'm very particular about that. I, there's, a, there's a building in Houston, Texas called the Williams Tower. It literally is the largest, tallest building in the world outside of a business district. It's in the Galleria area, but 40 miles away, you can see it out on 288 because it stands out in this area that's not surrounded by large buildings. And yet people in the Galleria just walk around it like it's just another building. They act like it don't mean nothing. They throw their trash out in front. But people in the Guinness, who've read the Guinness Book of Records know that this building is magnificent. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that God has a magnificent, tall building that sits here in this place. <laughs> don't, don't you walk around it like it ain't nothing. Amen. Familiarity breeds contempt, but there are others who see him from afar, who knows that he's a giant in his own right. I'm going to go on because he gave me a certain amount of time, and I'm going to do the best I can to get you out of here. But let me just go ahead and tell you, I came with a premeditated shout. Yeah, me too. Me too. Amen. Amen. I, I came prepared to praise God. I, I don't need. I don't need that. I, I listen. Let me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read my scripture in just a minute. But I'm already preaching. I, I I I tell people where I go, particularly the first time, that I don't ask anybody to shout for me. Amen. I can shout for myself. But the psalmist says in Psalms number 107 that if the Lord has truly been good to you, then the redeemed ought to say so. If God has, if God has been good to you, yeah, he has been. and I say something you know something about, Hallelujah. you ought not need me to be a cheerleader to help you to shout. Hallelujah. 
Amen. You ought, you ought to just shout because God's been good. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Y'all sit down. You make me nervous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a, a, a scripture to you. I'm going to try to share a, a, a message for this day. This is ministry day. And I believe that everybody ought to be in ministry. When I got called to preach, I went and talked to an old preacher who shared with me that there is no discharge in this army. Amen. Because when the fighting is over, soldiers go home. Amen. So we're going, we're going, let, 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 me, let me read, let me read. I, I, I do have some etiquette. In, in Matthew chapter 25, a very familiar passage of scripture. I've been taught that when you go somewhere and you're not up to par, you ought to preach from a familiar passage. That way you won't have to work so hard. But then I've discovered that a lot of people, when it's familiar, they turn you off. But touch somebody next to you and say, you can still get fresh water from an old well. Amen. Amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version, Matthew 25, meet me in verse 14. It reads, I'm, 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 I'm going to read just a few verses because I, I don't want to take up all my time. You can read it when you get home. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling from a far country who called his own servants, you ought to underline own servants, and declare, delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. And when he had received the five talents, went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one talent, and dug in the ground, went and dug in the ground, and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with him. So he who had received five talents came and brought five others. Lord, you delivered me five talents, and look that I have gained five more talents. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Skip down, skip down, skip down just a little bit so I can cut to the chase real quick. Uh, therefore, in verse 28, therefore take the talent from him, the one who had five, and give it to the one who has tens. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades thereof, but the word of God shall stand forever. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about maximizing your talent God's way. Amen. Go ahead and go ahead and help somebody who didn't understand all that. Tell them you got to supersize it. Amen. You got to supersize it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This text today might be a little difficult to some. But then not every word that's preached is designed to make you shout. Amen. There's some preached words ought to make you uncomfortable. Do I have a witness here? Uh, there are some preached words that ought to make you realize that you've been coming short of what God has done for you. Every time I think about how good God has been to me, I run quickly and tell somebody. Because people have a, mm, a preconceived misconception about how you ought to look. Folk think that when you're saved, you got to come in and sit up and fold your arms and look like you've been eating a persimmon. But I've discovered that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't have to look like I'm sad. I don't have to look like I'm pompous and pious. I don't have to look like I'm saved. I, I just be saved. 
I, I don't have to come. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he introduced our church as the Ark of Restitution Missionary Baptist Church. But but in a reality, we say we're Baptist Pentecostal because we've got everything that God wants us to have. When you do what God said do, then it does not matter what you call yourself. Too, too often folk in the church want to use adjectives and things to describe who they are. They're Baptist, they're Methodist, they're Pentecostal, they're this and they're that. God says, if you want to be what I want you to be, forget about the adjectives, start using verbs, start saying come and go and see and run and tell you, you you ought to have a different vocabulary once God has come into your life and so Jesus here shares with us through this text written by Matthew and I understand that talents were were literally money but I want to use them to help describe what I want you to understand in here today because too many folk or oh, oh, somebody gonna help me here too many folk come to church and we confuse church work with the work of the church come, come, come on help me if you can I say we confuse church work with the work of the church you, you see singing in the choir and learning that the that the Israelites stopped singing when they took them off into Babylonian captivity and hung their harps on the willow trees don't understand that singing in the choir is church work but the work of the church is to go ye into all the world compelling men to Christ that's why you got choir members who won't sing unless you sing their song I, I know, I know that's not this church. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I've been to some church that got ch church work like that. They've got ugly acting ushers. They, uh, come on, help me if you can. They, they've got missionaries who've become stationary. They've got trustees that you, you can't trust. I'm, 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 I'm. And so, and so if we are going to be of any benefit to the church, if we are going to be, not only must we become engaged, but we've got to understand, you see, when I was young, I was in the church, but I didn't have any church in me. Come on, help me if you can. I, I, you, 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 you need to get some, some church in, in you. Uh, ooh, this, where does time go? I'm, I'm going to put this up here, Pastor, so I can... Try to, try to keep myself composed. Let me, let me run down to the, to the text real quick. Jesus, uh, at this time of ministry, is sharing some principles with his disciples. He's very deliberate and, and standing in the shadows of the cross. He knows that his time is almost at hand. And so he shares this parable because he wants his disciples to become kingdom conscious. Are oh, you going to help me here? Uh, yeah, he, he, he's trying to generate some kingdom consciousness. Just like, just like the sister here was, she's trying to get you to understand uh, uh, you need to vote. And, and, and she told you, uh, I, I, I told Greenfield, I got to be very careful. I'm in Washington, D.C. I'd say this different if I was at home. Uh, but, 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 but you got to go vote. And you've got to vote your conscience. I, I'm gonna wait and tell my, my church who to vote for. But 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 you 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 vote your conscience. Come on, help me. You know that you know that some things have changed. You you know that the environment in which we live have have changed. If you turn on the TV. Jesus wanted his disciples, let me come on back to the church, wanted his disciples to be kingdom conscious. And so when you read chapters 24 and 25, he's making sure that his disciples hold on to two principles. He, he, he wants them to know that the day of the, uh, and the hour of the Son of Man is coming. And so he wanted them to not get it distracted. And so he told them to remain focused. Amen. Touch somebody close to you and say, remain focused. Come on, come on. If you haven't met the person sitting next to you, tell them your name because this is going to be an interactive message. I'm going to have you touching on them all day. Touch them again and say, remain focused. 
Hey, hey, amen. Remain focused. You, you got to keep your eye on the prize. Because I believe in 2016, we lost focus. We, there were too many people thought we had this thing in hand and left the voting process to somebody else. Uh, do I have a witness here? And so, so tell them to remain. But then the second thing he says is, I want you to remain faithful. Uh, and, and so the final verse of that chapter 25 deals with this theme about being faithful. Uh, are you going to help me here? Look, look, look at what Jesus does with the servants. These servants, he says, they were his servants. They belong to him. Uh, I, I didn't give but three amens. Let me say it again because you probably didn't hear me. They belong to him. Uh, and so the first thing, this text is tailored to teach us, you are not your own. Amen. You belong to God. I said, you belong to God. I, I know you got it going on. I, I, I know you're educated. I know you got fine things. I know you got nice accoutrements. I know you've got cash, cars, clothes, and commodities. I know you've got all kinds of degrees on the wall, but I share with the young people of our church, those degrees alone won't help you because, listen, because education without salvation just makes a smart devil. Somebody gonna help me here. You, 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 you need something more than book sense. You need to know the sense that Big Mama had when she said, God will make a way out of no... You. My mama had a fifth grade education, but she could tell me that God can do more with two dimes and a nickel than I can do with all my whole paycheck. Because God knows how to make things stretch. And so he wanted them to know, he wanted them to know that I've got some things for you because you belong to me. Here's, here's a little something I want to drop. I want to just drop this on you. You can keep it somewhere, those taking notes. The good news is that he who purchased me also protects me. He, so the one who bought me, I, I was bought with a price. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He paid for me on a hill. For, I, that's the end. I don't want to get there. Listen, I was bought with a price, but because he bought me, he takes care of me. But he tells me, you are my servants, and he has given us some stuff. Well, before we run off and take that too far, I need to tell you, he didn't give it to you. He, he just loaned it to you. And that's why you got to be careful how you use stuff that belongs to somebody else. Do I have a witness here? You got to take good care of stuff that does not belong. Oh, man. Y'all making me work too hard. You got to be careful with stuff that don't belong to you. The, the psalmist tell you, you can tell you it doesn't belong to you because the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. Reach around and tell cook for me the whole world and they that dwell therein. And I've discovered that God, no matter what you have, God has his own circulation process. Yeah. Yes, he does. He'll either take stuff from you or he'll take you from stuff. But God has a, God has a way of getting it around. I don't care how stingy you are. Come on, help me if you can. I don't care how tight you are. Listen, that you will never, ever, ever see a U-Haul following a hearse. God has a way of getting the stuff you leave. Uh, come on, help me if you can. Uh, 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 he, he entrusted it with you. He entrusted it with you. He gave it. And I knew I, knew I wouldn't give it about three amen, so I brought my own witness. Come here, Job. Tell me what the Lord will do. Job, Job, Job says to us, Pastor Jones, that God has a zero-sum game. He said, I came here naked. Come on, help me if you can. And naked shall I return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm glad that God can do more with nothing than I can do with everything. And so Jesus shares this parable of the talents. And um, oh, gee, can, can I take my time? Just, okay. Okay. I, 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 I'm going to listen to y'all. Look, look. Jesus shared this parable. I got, let, me, let me lift three things real quick. Can, can I, I'm, cutting, I'm cutting all the meat off this bone. But let me, let me just give Jesus, Jesus says... The, 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 the first thing I want to share with you in verse 15, the master assigned the talents. 
And so when you look at verse 15, it's clear that each one of these servants are assigned talents. It's very important that you understand this, that no one walked away empty-handed. It's very important because we come to church and we're thinking that we don't have anything to offer. Do I have a witness here? We're thinking we don't have nothing to offer. We can't sing. We can't do this. We can't do that. But God left us all with something. I have a God of witness here. And I, I'm, I'm glad that God did that. Regardless of how long you've been saved, regardless of how long you've been in church, listen, God has given you something. Amen. But listen, what, what I need to tell you is that while he gave everybody something, he didn't give no one body everything. Oh, God. Oh, God. Because you've got folk in the church who think they need to do everything. That it can't get done if they don't do it. Oh, uh, man, I ain't... I'm sorry, I thought I was at home. Listen, they think that they, they have the unmitigated goal to think the party don't start till they get there. But I got bad news for you, my dears. If you think the ch there are two words that my mama, my, my big mama, had made very important to me, and that is insurance and assurance. I've got a blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. But I've got a blessed insurance he can do it without me. And if you come in here thinking that the church can't go on with you, you mess around and die. Come on, help me. They're going to have your funeral on Saturday, and then Sunday morning the church bell going to ring again. Do I have a witness here? Amen. God, God, God has a way of getting this thing around. Now, touch your neighbor and say, one monkey don't stop no show. Listen, to, somebody ought to help me here. Somebody ought to help me out. I love, I love to play dominoes. I'm, I, I love to play uh, dominoes. I, I, I say I love to play dominoes. I love to play because I can play. Uh, as a matter of fact, well, let me just go ahead and tell you, I may not be the best domino player in the world, uh, but I'm the best you're going to ever see. And so, I so <laughs> yeah, somebody's going to help me here. Listen, and when I'm playing dominoes and, and I beat somebody and I tell them to get up, I tell them, y'all move around. We need two more clowns because y'all ain't funny no more. And, and the church is going to find out that when you're gone, come on, help me, somebody. Somebody's a lot funnier than you. They got somebody who can hit a note you can't hit. Preach, Pastor. They got somebody who can stand behind this desk and tell the story of how we made it over. God, God, God didn't give it all. You, don't, don't, don't miss that. God, God, God didn't give it all to anybody. No, no, no one person got it all. As gifted as you think you might be, you don't have it all. A amen. Lord, help me preach in this church. As anointed as you may think you are, God didn't give you everything. As often as God uses you to do a wonderful work, God can use somebody else. Y'all going to help me here? The Bible says the kingdom of God, that there are all kinds of people with all kinds of talent. He, had, he gave different amounts based on the different abilities. You're wondering why you can't get anything else? It's because you won't use what you got. Come on, help me, somebody. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing in the church? You have people who are gifted and can do a whole lot of stuff. And they're doing everything. And then you have people in the church who can't do but one thing. And you got to beg them to do that. Come on, help me, somebody. Nobody ought to have to beg you to serve God. You ought to serve him because he woke you up this morning. Do I have a witness here? Can I talk to somebody in this house? The text is tailored to teach us. It said he gave it to them based on their own ability. Pastor, can you, can you give me that water I had down there? He gave it to them because they're making me preach so my mouth is dry. He, he, he gave them talent based on their own ability. Because God will not bless you with more content than you have a capacity to hold. Uh, uh, I better say it again. Didn't nobody get that but you and me, man. God, God won't bless you with any more content than you have the capacity to hold. Amen, amen, amen. If you're driving a little old hoopty and, and, and acting like you're arrogant with a hoopty, how you think God's going to give you something else? Are <laughs> oh, you going to help me? If, if you're ready to quit just because somebody said something bad to you, how do you think God is going to bless you? 
uh, Venus, let me just share this with you. I, got, I, I, need to, I need to help somebody in here because somebody's going to lead a church because somebody said something bad about her. Yeah. Come on, help me if you can. Listen, my dears, somebody's going to say something about you anyway. Yeah. Amen. Folk, folk don't need nothing to talk about you. Do I have a witness? A folk don't need, listen, if you lose weight, they call you skinny. If you gain weight, they call you fat. If you ain't got no money, they call you broke. If you got some money, they say you're acting funny. If you get quiet, they call you stuck up. If you talk, they call you flirty. Folk gonna talk about you anyway. But I need somebody in here to look at your neighbor and say, talk about me much as you please. Cause the more you talk, I'm gonna bend my seat. I... Somebody jump up in here. Cause somebody looking at you crazy now cause you're clapping and shouting. But I wish you'd tell your neighbor, if you ain't been through my hell, get out of my holler. You can't tell me to shout. I, I, I need some real folk to look at somebody and say, I wish you would tell me to sit down. You, you don't know what God has done for me. You, you don't know how many days I had to cry. You don't know how long I was sick before he healed my body. You don't know how many bills I could not pay. Look at him. Look, look at look, look, look at him like you like you used to look. Back when you were still a thug. Look at him and say, I wish you. Come on, help me. You know how you could talk with your teeth still closed? I wish you would. Because folk. Have, a, have, 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 have an unmitigated goal to think that just because you're a Christian that they can treat you any kind of way. I wish I had some help here. Listen, listen, but the reality is we got something we can put on them. Oh, oh God. God. I was sharing, I was sharing at First Jericho the other day when you're dealing with issues. You ain't got to fight. Put the word on it. Do I have a witness here? When, when you got all kinds of stuff going on, when you got matters that are happening in your life, when you put the word on the matter, then the matter won't matter. <laughs> oh, God. I just love that. I say when you put the word on the matter, then the matter won't matter. Do I have a witness here? I got it. I got to go on. I got a whole lot more stuff, but, but I'll come back next time and get, because y'all didn't leave me much time. Listen, 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 God has the ability to put you where he wants to put you. Amen. But he has the ability, if you can't handle it, to do some other things with it. Have I got a witness here? I know, I know y'all wouldn't say amen at Pilgrim. So again, I brought my own witness. Paul said, I found myself getting arrogant. I found myself acting like I was more than what I really was. And so guess what the Lord did? He says, and the Lord put inside of me a thorn in my flesh. Come on, help me if you can. I need some Bible readers in here. He said he did it so that I would not be arrogant, so that I would not be walking around talking about God used me greater than he used you. Paul says he put a thorn in my flesh. And he says, and I asked him again and again, remove the thorn. Y'all know the story, don't you? The Lord turned around and said, Paul, I ain't tripping with you. My grace is sufficient. D didn't he say it? And so God will, God will do some things to keep us humble. Do, do I have a witness? You, you, you know why I praise him now? Because there were some days I went to school with cardboard underneath my shoes. Because I had a hole in the bottom of my shoes. But I never get besides myself because God has got me in some decent clothes now. Somebody gonna help me preach. Every now and then, I, I, he, he introduced me from Houston, Texas, but those who are not familiar with Houston, we got, we, we, we got, we got some areas called wards. And I'm from the third ward, one of the toughest wards. I, I'm right up 
out of Third Ward, Texas. Do I have a witness here? But I found out that some good can come from Third Ward. Because God knows how to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, to whomever he wants. You have a God of witness here? But he taught me in Third Ward, don't worry about where you live. Matter of fact, I was in college before I learned we were poor. Come on. I know y'all y'all probably say poor. In third in third ward they say poor. I was in I was in college before I learned that we were poor. But then I learned when I met the Lord that it does not matter what size house you live in. Because when you leave here, God's got a mansion for you. In the sky. Can, can I help somebody in here? It does not matter what kind of car you're in. I drive a nice car. Now, I got me a Mercedes Benz. Come on, help me if you can. Come on, help me. That, that, that ain't the funny part. Because when I get ready to leave here, eating that Mercedes ain't going to be good enough. Because God is going to tell the Heavenly Transportation Committee to swing down, sweet chariot, and let me ride. Bump your neighbor and say, I got a right to ride. Because through many dangerous toils and snares. Oh, God. Y'all leave me alone. I got a cut cross. That's just my first point. Now, not only did the master assign the talents, but then, listen, listen, each servant had to attend to his own talents. Do I have a witness? You, you can't, some, 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 of the, some of the worst stuff that can come up in the church is when folk try to attend to what somebody else is doing. It, it, isn't it amazing how everybody can do what you do better than you do, but they are not do. Come on, help me if you can. I'm trying to keep the confusion down. It, it, you, everybody in the choir don't like what the choir singing, and you ain't even in the choir. I, I, was, I, I, I keep forgetting I'm not in Houston. You, I'm tired of them singing that same old song. Maybe it's that same old song that helps to get them over. Have, have I got one witness here? I've got a song that helps to get me going. Every Sunday morning when I stand behind this desk, I have the musician play Speak to My Heart, Lord, because I need to hear from Lord. I've heard so much of your stuff. I've heard so much of what's going on around. I need to hear from the Lord. And so the Lord gave every one of them some talents. And what he did was when he gave them the talents, he wanted them to go out and use what he gave them. Do I have a witness here? Can I tell you that the reason God can use me, the reason God can do what he did for me was back when I joined church. And I joined uh, the Calvary Hill Baptist Church at 3612 Anita, Houston, Texas, 77004 under the pastorage of Pastor B.R. Williams. I learned how to do some things. I took the gifts God gave me and I learned at least four things. You got time to write them down? I learned, first of all, how to show up. Come on, help me. And so I showed up for Bible study. I, I showed up for Sunday school. I, I showed up for choir rehearsal. I showed up for men's meeting. I, I learned how to show up. But not only did I learn how to show up, I learned how to grow up. I learned how to stop acting like a baby and getting mad because somebody straightened me out. I learned how to stop puffing my lips out and walking away because somebody's I learned how to show up. I learned how to grow up, but then I learned how to give up. I learned how to give to my pastor who was on love offering. I learned how no man, he was he not only was on love offering, he got a salary, but I had enough sense to know that even a cool drink of water given in the name of a prophet, I could reap a prophet's reward. Not only did I learn how to show up and how to grow up and how to give up, I learned how to shut up and stop talking to everybody in the church about it. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm, 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 I'm okay. I promise. I promise. God, God has given each of us abilities and skills and creativity, but it's up to you to develop those skills. I say it's up to you to develop those skills. I, I came to the men's meeting on, on yesterday morning. I was so happy I came. Uh, I got some stock tips. <laughs> Come on, help me. Because there are some things you can learn. And you know, 
I, I can't tell y'all everything because what went on in the men's meeting. Come on, help me. I ought to stay in the men's meeting, but I learned all kinds of things, but then I've learned things everywhere I go. My, mama taught me that when you go anywhere, you ought to learn some things. Some things you learn to do, and then some things you learn not to do. But you ought to learn something. Man, you were playing that thing so good, I wanted to get over there myself and, and, and play on that, but I can't play, so I, here's, here's my part with the choir. Do I have a witness here? And so soon as I walked in, I saw people up standing, I said, woo, man. I found, I found my part in the choir. And every now and then, every now and then, the choir will sing a song in a key I can hit. Come on, help me. And I do just like your pastor. I can run and grab my mic. Come on, help me. Because I look at, touch somebody close to you and say, you got to get in where you fit in. It's a too many people in the body of Christ are settling for goodness when greatness is available to you. Do I have a witness here? Look at your neighbor and say, listen, you ain't seeing the best part of me. I, I talked to, I met with Pastor and his wife. I was talking to them on the other day, and they were talking about their travels, and I thought about all the travels I've done. And one of the travels, I went on an on a Alaskan cruise. And I discovered we were cruising around this glacier, and I was starting to get a little worried because the ship was getting a little too close. Uh oh, you going to help me here? And then I had read somewhere where glaciers break from the bottom up. And that an iceberg could jump up out of that water. Come on, help me. And knock a hole in the ship. And that was too much water for me to drink. Are oh, you going to help me here? So as they began to get close, began to get close, the captain came over and said, look at all of the beautiful icebergs. Look at the water. And then he said something that was very startling to me. He says, as big as that iceberg is, you can only see about a third of it because two-thirds of it is under the water. I wish you'd look at somebody next to you and say, the real me you can't see. Come on, help me if you can. Look, 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 go, go ahead and look at them and say, there's more to me than what your eyes... Are y'all going to help me? Look at them. Tell them, there's more to me than what your eyes can see. Somebody, I say this to all of the young women, particularly the young girls in our church. It ain't who was on your arm that makes you what you are. Do I have a witness? You don't need nobody on your arm to be beautiful. If you want to be beautiful, just buy you a mirror. Preach, pastor. You, you don't have to have nobody to make you who you are. You're somebody all by you. I need about 17 sisters to jump up and say, I'm who I am all by myself. Y'all oh gonna help me? I don't need nobody. Uh, come on, help me if you can to make me who I am. I need somebody here, and, and maybe, maybe you never heard of James Cleveland, but there is another artist maybe you have heard of. Come here, Michael Jackson. Tell him what to do. Mike says, "I'm looking at the man in the mirror." Come on, help me if you can. I'm asking him to change his ways. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself. And come on, help me and make a change. Don't sit up there and act like you ain't never heard, Mike. Listen, unfold your arms. Oh, somebody cried last night since I lost my baby. Come on. That preacher ain't got a bit of sense. But look, look. You need to stop crying about that and go on and talk to God about it. Oh, God. I don't care. I'm, I'm trying to quit, Pastor. I'm sorry. Oh, ooh, I'm way past my time. Let me, let me get through, but can I tell you this? Can, can, can I tell you this? Look, look, you need to have some virtue on the inside. Amen. You, got to, you, can, you, you put all of that time to the outside and never put anything on the inside. I got bad news for you, my dears, because Father Time can always outrun Mother Nature. Come on, help me. What's on the outside is going to change. But, but, but bump somebody close to you and say it's an inside job. Well, I got, I got to leave. I, I got to leave there. Pastor's looking at me funny. Let, let, me, let me go. Let, 
let, let, let, let, let me go. Not, 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 only, not, <laughs> not only is it God who gives the gift, and, but the servant who attains the gifts. But then it's the servants who've got to give an account of their talents. Have I got a witness here? Because the Bible says that he, the, the, the master did come back. And I got, I got to tell you this, the master is coming back. Oh, ooh, did you hear that? I feel that hoop coming up. The master is, uh, uh, I, I said the master is coming back. I, touch your neighbor and say he is uh, coming back. And, and when he comes back, come, come, come on here, but don't fool yourself. He is keeping count. The young folk in third ward say he's looking and booking. He's writing down the things that you've done. God is keeping count of your possessions. But he's keeping count not of your possessions rather, but of your potential. Are you doing for him everything God told you to do? I want God when he come back to find me faithful. I'm going on to my seat when I tell you I'm the oldest of seven children. Have I got a witness here? And yet I'm the least talented of them all. All of them have talent. I said all of them have talent. All of them have talent. The brother next to me, uh, his talent ain't that good, but, but he's got talent. <laughs> Come on, help me. He, look at, he can fight like a madman. Come on, somebody. He, he, he's talented enough to fight. Do I have a witness here? My sister, my oldest sister is a peacemaker. My number two sister is an organizer. My baby sister can sing like an angel. My baby brother can cook like Chef Boyardee. And I can't do nothing. Have I got a witness here? Some of y'all gonna help me here? I said I can't do nothing. And I asked God as a child to give me certain things. I always wanted to be an athlete. I was athletic when I was young, when I was little. I was athletic. Uh, and, and I, but I asked God to make me a professional athlete always wanted to be six foot two or better uh, amen i wanted to be tall dark and handsome come on help me i wanted to be persuasive in my articulation come on help me i wanted to be a ladies man i, I wanted to have thick curly locks of hair i wanted to have a nice baritone voice like luther Van i wanted to sound like luther come on help me when i sing but listen god god saw fit do I have a witness to put me in a five foot seven and a half inch frame? I don't weigh 200 pounds. I only weigh 170 pounds when I'm soaking wet. I got to pay somebody to take care of my hair. I got a soft tenor voice, but I've decided to take what God gave me and use it for the glory of God. Is there anybody here who's going to use what God gave you? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm going to use what God gave me. Have I got a witness here? What the Lord has given me has been mighty good to me. Is there anybody here today who knows that God's been good? Give somebody a high five and say, I tried the Lord and he's been good. If he's been good, say yeah. Say it, say it, say it, ain't he all right? I got the closest word. I met the Lord on the 3rd of September in 1978. He put clapping in my hands, running in my feet, joy in my heart heaven in my view ain't he all right ain't he all right ain't he all right if you try him say yeah if he's good say yeah say yeah i got to leave here but god's been good won't he make you laugh when ain't nothing funny won't he make you scratch where you don't eat Mitch, won't he make you run when ain't nobody behind me? One last time, grab your neighbor, hold on to their hands. I say, grab your neighbor, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them. Say, neighbor, I got the can't help it. I can't help myself. God been good. I'm going to use what the Lord gave me. I'm going to use. Woo! 
what the Lord gave me. And if you don't like it, go on home. Because God has been mighty good. I need somebody who knows he's been good. Don't fool me now. I need somebody, if you know he's been good, break the aisle, run over and tell somebody else, I tried him, and he, has he been good? How good has he been? Big Mama used to say, he's just like Campbell's soup. He's mmm good. Mmm good. at home she's battling breast cancer do I have a witness here listen don't don't say all oh, y'all I don't need your pity I need your prayers and I shared with my wife if you pray for rain you got to deal with the mud Look at somebody that's going through it and say, that's just mud, baby. Shake it off. Come on, look at her. Say, that's just mud. God has never failed me yet. See, somebody here needs, somebody been thinking, it's Job Jireh that got you out. It wasn't Job Jireh, it's Jehovah Jireh. That job going to play out. But somebody here. I could go forever. God's been good to me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for the God's preacher. Been good to me. Come on, come on, come on.